Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about the classification of molecules into different point groups. In the last video, we have revised different symmetry operations and how to identify the different symmetry operation in the molecules. Now today, we will talk about the classification of those molecules on the basis of those symmetry elements. So, in short, point group classification is the classification of molecule into different groups on the basis of the symmetry operations which we can perform. Now, molecule belonging to the same point group may not have the similar chemical or physical properties, but the kind of uh, the symmetry operations which we are going to perform on them will be similar. Now the next question is how to classify the molecule into different point groups. To classify the molecules, uh, molecules are generally classified into three types. The first one is molecule with the special symmetry. So we call it as MSS type. The second one is molecules are classified as MLS that is molecule with the low symmetry. And third one is molecules with the high symmetry. So we divide the molecule in these three types basically with the special symmetry, then low symmetry and high symmetry. But to get a simplified way, chemists have made different flow charts. These flow charts contain some of the questions and answers related to that will lead to a particular point group. Now I'll be using one of the chart which I have taken from the book Stereochemistry by Nasipuri. So in that chart when we'll follow it you will understand what do you mean by the molecule with this, this special symmetry then low symmetry and the high symmetry. But basically you have to remember that molecules are classified into three types of symmetry. Special symmetry, low symmetry and high symmetry. Now let us go to the chart and this we'll is the chart the that we will be using for classifying the molecule into point groups. You won't be able to see the exact wordings right now but I will zoom it out afterwards for you to read each and every question. If you'll see I have made this chart in four different colors to classify or to distinguish them with a particular question. Now if I'll zoom these uh, questions for you then I will just focus on the first question everyone. Now this is a classification of molecule. Here you can see the first part showing saying is that linear molecule with the C infinity axis. Then there is a non-linear molecule with one CN axis. Then non-linear molecule with more than one CN axis. And finally, the non-linear molecule without CN axis. So this is the first part that is in this way we are going to classify the molecule. First thing that you will observe is this is linear molecule and rest all three are the non-linear molecule. So while looking at the molecule, we can definitely distinguish whether the molecule is linear or whether it is non-linear. So let us say I have example here. I'm taking example of uh, let's say acetylene. So I'm drawing it H C triple bond C H. Now, if you look at this particular molecule, definitely we can say this molecule is linear molecule because we know the carbon-carbon bond angle is 180 degree. Now, the linear molecule is there. So, we can analyze the axis of rotation. So, if we'll talk about this axis of rotation, we can imagine this axis of rotation which is passing through this linear bond that is H. C H C H. Now this is I will call it a C infinity axis because in finite times you can rotate the molecule to get the equivalent 
positions or equivalent uh, kind of rotations so this is the c infinity axis which is present in the molecule so i will define this molecule as first as we said this is linear molecule and which is containing c infinity axis so this is the first part which i can easily identify from the molecule so let us go back to the chart so i have distinguished this molecule is linear with the c infinity axis so in the classification i will go for this yellow chart to classify it into the proper point group now what is the next question in the yellow chart is is it having any sigma h plane now sigma h plane it's something uh, which is perpendicular to the your principal axis now this is my principal axis so any plane perpendicular to the c infinity axis which is dividing the molecule into two equal parts so if we look at this molecule here i can imagine a plane which is passing through this carbon carbon triple bond this will divide the molecule into two equal part it is reflection of each other so we have the c uh, this sigma plane this i can call it as sigma h plane which is perpendicular to the c infinity axis that's why i'm calling it as sigma h so i have c infinity axis as well as i have a sigma h plane therefore the next part is for this question i have answer yes so it says if the answer is yes the point group of the molecule is d infinity h so therefore i can call this molecule i can write the answer for this question the point group of this molecule is nothing but d infinity h so in this way we can classify the molecule into point group let me take one more example here i will take example of linear molecule only but a little different so let us say i'm writing h c triple bond n now this is also linear molecule and whenever there is a linear molecule i can imagine the axis of rotation which is passing through this all atoms planar atoms and i can call it as c infinity axis okay so again if i'll refer to the chart i have a linear molecule with c infinity axis but the next question is whether it is having sigma h or not so as i told you we have the linear molecule with a sigma infinity axis there has to be one plane which is perpendicular to the c infinity axis so suppose if i'll draw a plane in the middle of this molecule let us say i'm drawing it through this carbon so if i'm drawing it through the carbon i'm not getting to equal part so definitely this sigma h is not there so sigma h is not there so answer for this question is no and when the answer is no the point group of the molecule is c infinity v so i will go back to the question and therefore i can write here my answer the point group of this molecule is c infinity v so this is a chart of the molecules which is presenting the all linear molecule now linear molecule we have to remember they will always contain the infinity axis so this c infinity will always be present whether this molecule may have the sigma h or not when it is having sigma h the point group for the molecule is d infinity h and when we don't have the sigma h the point group for the molecule is c infinity v now if we'll go to the basic part that is the classification as we told as we said it is mss mlh mls or mhs so according to this rule the classification this molecule belongs to the mss type all these molecule so the chart first chart that we referred this is presenting the molecule for the special symmetry so we call them as special symmetry molecules 
so we completed the classification of molecules that is linear molecules into different point groups so the first part of chart we have completed now let us see the second part of chart so let us see one example from this part i'm taking example of ethylene so i have c double bond c and this is attached to these hydrogens this is planar molecule but definitely this is not linear molecule so i can say this is non linear molecule now we need to talk about what are the different principal axes or what are the different axes of rotations which are present in the molecule so we'll first talk about its principal axis to see the principal axis i'm using one of the site this is the otterbein site uh you can just refer to this symmetry at otterbein i'm using it for your convenience that that you can see the symmetry operations conveniently over here so this is ethylene molecule now you can see over here so these are two gray atoms presenting the two carbon and these white atoms are presenting the hydrogen so this is planar molecule carbon carbon double bond is present in between them so let me talk about first the c2 axis that is which is present in the molecule now when i'm talking about the c2 axis the first c2 axis which you can see is passing through the carbon carbon double bond so if i'll rotate this molecule through this i'm getting the equivalent position again i'm rotating if you'll see this it is something which is passing through the carbon carbon double bond but if you look at this this is a plane containing the carbon and the hydrogen while this c2 axis is perpendicular to that plane so if you look at this if i'll rotate the molecule through this i will get the equivalent position when i'm rotating it to the 180 degree again i can also have one more c2 now we can see one c2 is passing through the carbon carbon double bond and other c2 is also passing through the carbon carbon double bond but both these c2s are perpendicular to each other okay apart from this i have one more c2 which is passing through the carbon carbon bonds you can see this is also rotation through this at 180 degree will give me the equivalent structure so there are total 3 c2 present as per the rule when the order of the symmetry axis it same then the one which is passing through the more number of carbon atom we will call it as a principal axis so out of these three the one which is passing through this carbon carbon is my principal axis so i'm just ignoring the other two i'm just concentrating on this so how many principal axes are there only one okay so if i'll go to the chart again this says non linear molecule with one cn axis what do you mean by one there is a principal axis but there is only one principal axis so for this molecule again as i said this is non linear molecule with one c2 i will call it as 1c2 because this is my principal axis okay so this is one principal axis is present so that's the first part of the chart the next part of the chart says what is the next question says is it having c2 axis perpendicular to the cn axis just now we have seen yes is it it is having the other c2 which are perpendicular to the principal c2 so for this question my answer is yes so if my answer is yes i will go to the left side of this chart so the answer is yes the next question is it is asking is it having the sigma h plane so before going to that i will write my answer here it is the non linear molecule first of all secondly there are two c2 axes which are perpendicular to the principal axis so the next part of the chart is saying me there are two c2 axis perpendicular to the principal axis 
the next question is whether it is having sigma h plane or not so if you look at this we will again concentrate only on the principal axis as i told you last time the sigma h plane is the one which is perpendicular to the c2 axis so if i'll talk about sigma h plane you can see this is the plane which is perpendicular to my c2 axis and it is dividing the molecule into two equal parts which are reflection of each other so the answer to this question is yes so next question that is whether it is having sigma h plane or not the answer to the question is yes and that's why i will go to the again left side of the chart it says if yes the point group is dnh again i will go here so here i will write it down that it is having sigma h plane and when it is having sigma h plane the point group of this molecule is dnh now when i'm writing n n is here 2 so i will write the group of point group as d2h so this is a classification of the molecule that is ethylene which is classified as d2h okay so now i will take one more example here uh, for the classification i have selected the other molecule that is cyclohexane now when i'm talking about the cyclohexane we know that there are six carbon atoms arranged in the cyclic form we know that the most preferable structure for this is the chair form but now right now we will be talking about the boat form so when i'm talking about the boat form we know that when in the boat form there are two hydrogen that is called as a flagpole atoms which are having experiencing the strain in the molecule so let us talk about this first of all i can talk about this that it is a non linear molecule okay this is a non linear molecule but I'm, i have to talk about whether it is having a uh, one principal axis or more than one principal axis so let us see you can see here this is a cyclohexane but it is present in the boat form you can see these are the flag poles present here which are going to experience the strain in the molecule now there is a c2 molecule c2 axis you can see this c2 axis is passing through the center of this cyclohexane chain so when it is passing through this cyclohexane chain if you'll rotate this molecule through this you can see you will get the equivalent structure i have rotated it through 180 degree and i am coming across the equivalent structure so this is 1c2 so the qu first question that is is it having one principal axis yes so this is non linear molecule with the c2 axis so my answer to this question is this is non linear containing one c2 axis now the next question of the chart what it says whether it is having any other c2 axis if you look at the structure there is no other c2 which can be present here so the answer for this question you cannot have any other c2 which is perpendicular to this c2 which will create the equivalent structure so we don't have any other c2 present here so for this question my answer is no and since the answer is no i will go to the right side of the chart here what is the next question whether it is having any kind of sigma h plane now again i'm discussing sigma h plane it's something which is perpendicular to the c2 axis now if you look at this c2 i cannot imagine any other plane which is perpendicular to it which will divide the molecule into equal parts so there is no sigma h plane so i will say the answer is no so for this question the answer is no the next question is is it having any sigma v plane definitely we can have a sigma v plane you can imagine the same plane containing molecule this is the one plane you can see it's containing the c2 axis and there is one more plane you can see so these two planes 
are containing the C2 axis. So I can call it as sigma V plane, not the sigma H. So the answer for this question is yes, it is having sigma V plane. And when it is having sigma V plane, the point group is CNV. So let us come back to our question. So what we have said here, first of all, it's a nonlinear molecule, one with one C2 axis, no perpendicular C2 axis present. There is no sigma H plane, but yes, we have two sigma V plane. And therefore, the point group for this molecule is C2V. That was C and V. I have written it as 2 because the principal axis is 2. So this was the classification of molecule using the second part of the chart. So you can use this second part of the chart to classify the molecule. Here we have to remember this chart to be used when we have a nonlinear molecule with one principal axis. Let us see now the third part of the chart which says it's a nonlinear molecule with more than one CN axis. So for that, I'll be taking example of methane. So let us say this is methane. Everyone knows methane is, imagine this is a carbon attached to the four different hydrogen. Now, if I have to talk about the principal axis, I will talk about there is one axis you can imagine which is passing through this carbon hydrogen one of the hydrogen and through the center of these three atoms or center of this pyramid so when i'm rotating this molecule i'm getting the c3 rotation that is when i'm rotating it through the 60 degree angle i'm getting the equivalent position when i can imagine the molecule having the one C3 axis through this carbon and hydrogen, then I can imagine through this carbon and this hydrogen also. Again, this carbon and this hydrogen, this carbon and this hydrogen. So if we look at this, we are have having total four C3 axis. But if you look at all this C3 axis, all are, you, are, you can see they are equivalent. You cannot consider one of them as a principal and other are subsidiary. All are having the equivalent positions. And because of that, here there are four principal axes. In the previous case, if you remember, in the case of the ethylene, let us go back to the ethylene molecule. You can see in this ethylene molecule, if you remember, there were three C2 present but only one was passing through the maximum number of carbon atom and that's why we considered one as a principal and other as a subsidiary. But in this case, we cannot distinguish them like that. Here, all are equivalent. That's why we have four principal axes and that's why I'll be using this third chart which says the nonlinear molecule with more than one CN axis. So in the case of methane, I have four principal axes. What is the next question? Is it having any C5 axis? Now, in the case of the methane, definitely the highest order is C3. So we cannot have the C5 axis. The answer for this question is no. So I will go to the right side of the chart. What is the next question? Is it having the I symmetry? So next question is whether it is having inversion center. So if you look at this molecule, we cannot have an inversion center because we don't have any part. For example, suppose if I imagine this as a center of the molecule and uh, if I look, go to the one side, I'm coming across the hydrogen. Other side, there is no other atom. So this molecule is not having inversion center. So the answer for this question is no. So the next question is, is it having C4 axis of symmetry? Again, C3 is the highest order and therefore it is not having C4 axis. So again, the answer is no. So when I'll go to the last question, it is asking me whether it is having any sigma plane. So, so it's asking whether we are having any sigma D plane. So we have this plane, which is dividing molecule into equal part. We can have even this plane containing these three atoms. You can see every plane is containing the two atoms. So these two atoms present, these two atoms present, these two present. So there are six combinations possible. 
and that's why we have the six sigma plane so the answer for this question is yes and that's why the methane belongs to the point group td tetrahedral that's why the classification of molecule is td let us take one more example of this for this i'm taking the example of sulfur hexafluoride so you can imagine this is a sulfur atom four fluorines in the square planar structure one fluorine is above and one fluorine is below now first question if you remember in the chart whether it is having more than one principal axis so if you look at this we can have this i will first talk about the c4 axis definitely it's a principal axis so i will talk about principal axis c4 you can imagine this is a principal axis passing through the one sulfur and two fluorine so like that we can imagine this axis also with other two fluorine and other two fluorine so there are three c4 axis so we have more than one principal axis therefore definitely we'll be using the similar chart this one which is having more than one cn axis now is it having any c5 axis no because as we have already discussed it's not have it's having the highest order is c4 therefore c5 is absent so the answer for this question is no the next is it having the i center so i center if i'll imagine this is the center of the molecule yes definitely the inversion center is present if you want to see the inversion center is the sulfur atom so you can imagine these opposite atoms are equivalent and therefore their inversion center is present in the molecule so answer for the inversion center is yes that's why i'm coming here now the question says is it having c4 axis definitely the c4 is our principal axis so answer is yes and that's why the point group for the molecule is oh so this molecule belongs to the oh point group so let us refer to the last part of the chart that is i'm going to talk about the non linear molecule without cn axis the simplest example here i can take is let us talk about uh, i'm imagining carbon attached to one hydrogen one chlorine one bromine and one fluorine so if you remember the definition this is a chiral center attached to the four atoms or the groups and whenever we have a chiral center definitely we don't have any kind of cn axis so this is non linear molecule with no cn axis and that's why i will be using the last part of the chart that is non linear molecule without cn axis the next question is is it having any sigma plane so if you look at the molecule definitely this is asymmetric and that's why it won't be having any symmetric plane so the answer for this question is no so i will go here is it having i center again the answer will be no because the molecule is asymmetric and that's why it belongs to the point group c1 so any asymmetric molecule remember it belongs to the part that is c1 let us take one more example of this this is example of two carbons attached to two hydrogen so it's ethane derivative attached to two chlorine and two fluorine now if you look at this molecule this molecule is not having any cn axis okay but the next question of the chart whether it is having sigma h plane so if you look at this molecule it is not having sigma h plane also because the arrangement of atom is somewhere different and you cannot divide it into equal parts but the next question is it having the i center yes it is having the i center you can imagine this center and you can see opposite atoms are equivalent and all opposite atoms are equivalent and therefore it's having the i center and since the answer is yes the molecule is ci 
So the point group of this molecule is Ci. This is the last example. This is ethylene derivative, carbon-carbon double bond, but two hydrogens being replaced by, let's say, I'm replacing it by one bromine and one chlorine. Now, this is not having any kind of CN axis. Okay, but the next question of the chart is, is it having sigma H plane? Yes, this is planar molecule. And whenever you have the planar molecule, planar molecule always have a plane, which is dividing the molecule into equal parts, the reflection part. Since it is having the sigma plane, the molecule belongs to the CS point group. So classification of molecule is CS. Okay, so overall, if you'll see, we have used this chart for four type of molecules. That is molecule with linear molecule with a C infinity axis. This is MSS type. If you remember the first classification which I told you, that is MSS, that is special symmetry. So the first part of chart refers to the MSS. Then we have the second type that is non-linear molecule. And if you remember, this molecule is having the high symmetry. So this molecule belongs to MHS, that is high symmetry. The next is again the tetrahedral octahedral type where we are having more than one principal axis. So again, this comes under MSS, that is special symmetry. So under special symmetry, we have two type of molecule, linear molecule with the C infinity axis and non-linear molecule with the more than one CN axis. And the last one is having very less symmetry operations and that's why it comes under the category of MLS, that is molecule with the low symmetry. So this is the chart that I'll be sharing with you in your classroom. You can use this chart for classif classification of molecules. It's basically some questions are there, related answers are there. So just find the question, find that symmetry operation in your molecule and then classify the molecule into respective point group. Okay, for the assignment of this video, you will go to the last assignment again that is the Google slide where you have written the symmetry elements for the one molecule which has been allotted to you. Now you will use this chart and you will classify that molecule into a respective point group. And don't forget to turn in or mark it as done for the assignment because otherwise the assignment is uh, in my in my drive it is always shown as missing or not submitted and I won't be able to grade it so just don't forget to click on turn in or done thank you